Okay, Math 2, here we go. So you have reviewed your work from the previous day where you were measuring sides, side lengths of dilations and also the distance from the center of dilation. And you wrote down, what did you notice? So this is from one of my classes. This is what they noticed. If the shape was dilated with any scale factor, the prime and regular ratios would equal the scale factor. And then they continued to say, if you know the length of the original line and the prime, you can find the scale factor by dividing the prime by the original line. And then they gave an example. Okay, so that's kind of in a nutshell what you should have figured out. And so now you are going to do a worksheet where you're going to apply that idea. So go ahead and pause the video right now and go try that worksheet. Okay, welcome back. So now I'm going to show you me completing the worksheet. So here it is. I'm going to, I pre-recorded this. I'm going to talk over it. So here's what we did. So we have this worksheet here and I'm going to take my ruler and I'm trying to find the scale factor. So I'm going to go ahead and find the distance from P to B and from P to B prime. I'm going to find those two distances. So here it goes. So now I'm going to write my ratio and I noticed that my object started big. Okay. The pre-image was A, B, C, D. So my pre-image was really large and then it got reduced. So when I set up my ratio, I want to keep that in mind. Is my object getting bigger or smaller? And so I noticed that the image is smaller than the pre-image. So in order to make sure I have a scale factor, that is going to reduce the size, I know I need to have a fraction that's smaller than one. So that first one, we get an answer of the scale factor was one third. Now the second one, I don't have the point of dilation, the center of dilation. So this time I'm just gonna go ahead and measure the side lengths. So right now I'm measuring the distance from A to B. And then the corresponding side length. You know, we talked about corresponding angles when we were talking about lines cut by a transversal. We also use the word corresponding when we're talking about the sides that are in the same position on an object. So notice I use the word corresponding again in this situation. Okay, so this time we started with the pre-image was small and then the image ended up getting bigger. So I know that my scale factor has to be bigger than one because it got bigger. So I'm setting up my ratio with a bigger number on top because I know that my image got bigger than the pre-image. So I'm gonna need a number that's bigger than one. And that equals a little more than two. So notice I didn't put an equal sign. I put a little squiggly equal sign. That means approximately, it means I rounded it off. Okay, now I need to locate the point of dilation. Well, I'm just gonna reverse engineer it. I'm going to connect A to A prime and draw that line really long. Now I'm connecting D to D prime. Unfortunately, I didn't realize it wasn't on the screen. Sorry about that, but I was connecting D to D prime. And now here I'm connecting C to C prime. And again, my apologies for not getting it on the screen. I need a director while I'm making videos to make sure I stay in the camera lens. And then I'm connecting B to B prime. There, this time you can see it. And notice what happens. All four of these lines end up meeting at the exact same location. So I know I it really is a dilation. They all came from that point right there. 
And of course, I had accidentally written part of my work where the point of dilation is. So I'm just going to move that out of the way. And that is my point of dilation, which I'm calling point P. Okay, so I hope that helped. You're going to do a little exploration now and figure some things out on your own as well.